Good afternoon and welcome to the Angry Astronaut. So over the course of the last couple of days, we've been hearing a lot about Raptor 3 and a huge amount of excitement swirling around this new innovation, this new engine that SpaceX is plowing out right now. And all of this makes what SpaceX does extremely exciting. I mean, they are so different from every other launch provider in terms of their constant innovation. They're constantly changing and improving what they do. They aren't satisfied to have the same old RS-25 engine that the shuttle used, for example, for many decades before Aerojet Rocketdyne finally gets around to improving it. They start improving on their engines almost immediately. But what I am a little concerned about is where the emphasis is being placed right now. What is important about the Raptor 3? And also, if we continue innovating, if SpaceX continues coming out with new engine after new engine, new prototype after new prototype, when do we have the finished product? When are we going to have a fully mature rocket that's capable of launching to orbit, refueling several times in quick succession, and landing astronauts on the moon? Because in theory, Starship is supposed to be able to do that in the next two years. Indeed, Starship is supposed to be able to carry out an unmanned mission to the moon next year. None of that seems really possible if we're constantly churning out prototypes. More importantly, what is really important about a new engine? Why are new engines necessary? Why do we produce new engines? Or why would SpaceX produce new engines? Is it just because of power? Or is power the most important thing that we should be looking for in an engine? Because that seems to be the case with all the chatter that I see about Raptor 3 right now, how it's 18%, 19% more powerful, something like that. People do quick calculations as to how much thrust 33 Raptor 3 engines are going to be able to produce, and then in turn, how much payload it's going to be able to carry up to orbit. But really, what is important about a new engine at this stage? Well, I'm here to tell you that even though power is important, at this point, it's of tertiary importance at best. Let me say that again, of tertiary importance at best. The more important factors that we should be looking for from Raptor 3 right now is reliability and reusability. And there may be another factor that's more important than power as well. And we're gonna get down to that right now. Thanks to the hardworking people at NASA Spaceflight and also my friends at Lab Padre, we're really getting lots of information on what SpaceX is up to and what Elon Musk is thinking about his new Raptor 3 engine or Raptor V3, whatever you want to call it. And he's the one that's actually doing these calculations for us. You don't have to do them yourself. 19.5 million pounds worth of thrust from 33 Raptor Raptor engines. But once again, is this really what Elon should be focusing on, or is this something he's doing for the benefit of the fans? In my opinion, he's doing this in order to impress people, not because this is what's the most important thing about Raptor V3. Personally, I would prefer it if he would focus on reusability like he used to in the past. Rapid reusability is an absolute essential if Starship is actually going to be a successful launch platform. Refueling in low Earth orbit is not going to be a practical thing, regardless of how powerful Raptor engines become, if you cannot achieve complete rapid reusability. And up to this point, SpaceX has failed to reuse any of their Raptor engines. Even SN15, the only Starship prototype that managed to land successfully and survive the experience, did not fly again. 
Elon talked about it flying again, and I wish that SpaceX at least attempted to launch this thing a second time, but they didn't do so. In my opinion, that's very unfortunate, and if it wasn't in good enough shape to be relaunched, regardless of how much work they put into it, that means that SpaceX has a lot more work to do. Now, perhaps a lot of that work has been focused on their new engines, the Raptor 2 and the Raptor 3. But once again, I maintain that if the Raptor engines only produce what Raptor 1 is capable of doing, the thrust that Raptor 1 was able to produce while it was being tested, and they also achieve complete reusability, that is a success far more so than an expendable Raptor version 3 that's far more powerful. Now, to be perfectly clear, Raptor V3 is still in early stages of development. Indeed, Starship as a rocket in general is still in development. It's still not that mature of a system, and it's not going to get mature until you have mature components. And of course, the most important component that you need, the most important final decision you need to make is what kind of engine are you going to be using on the finish product. If you change the engines, most probably the rocket needs to change as well. In this early stage of Starship's development, you can go with Raptor 2, Raptor 3, Raptor 4, anything you really damn well please, because the rocket is still in its development phase. However, once we get to the point to where we're going to be using tanker starships, lunar starship, etc., these are going to be mature rockets that are going to be more difficult to modify, and we need to get to that point fairly quickly if Starship is going to have the slightest chance of landing human beings on the moon in the next few years, which SpaceX is contractually obligated to do. Now, recently, I had an opportunity to research Rocket Lab's philosophy when it comes to engine reusability, and they have a very interesting approach. They actually don't want to push their engines any further than they should in order to put less fatigue on the engines and less stress, allowing them to be reused far more easily. Therefore, thrust is less important than long-term reusability to Rocket Lab. In my opinion, this is a very logical and very sensible approach, one that SpaceX should be looking at as well. Raptor 3's most important qualities should not be thrust. It should instead be simplicity, ease of manufacture. How easily can you mass produce these things? How quickly can you mass produce them? How inexpensively can you mass produce them? Then reliability, obviously, and reusability. Those things, in my opinion, are all more important than the power of the engine. Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 are both ridiculously powerful. So powerful, in fact, that they are destroying their own launch pads, making the engines more powerful is simply going to compound the problem at the launch facility. Keep in mind that all of this damage was created by less than 33 Raptor 2 engines firing at only 90% power for 10 seconds. What if you upgrade that power by almost 20%? How much more damage are you going to do? And how much more does the launch pad need to be beefed up in order to handle this much thrust? Keep in mind that all of the flame trenches that NASA currently uses are designed only for S. SLS and the Space Shuttle. As a matter of fact, SLS was so overpowered that even it did damage to its own launch tower. How much more damage is a ridiculously overpowered Starship going to do to its launch facility and how much engineering is it going to require to get the launch facility up to code in order to be able to survive these kinds of takeoffs? Now look, I am not saying that Starship is as powerful Powerful as it ever needs to be. Perhaps increasing its thrust at some point in the future makes some sense, but in my opinion, if you can simplify the propulsion system, in other words, if you have 17% more thrust, then use 17% fewer engines in order to simplify the propulsion system and make it less prone to failure. The Saturn V, after all, which turned out to be successful,
successful, whereas N1 was not successful, used only five engines to fling an unbelievable amount of payload not only into low Earth orbit, but of course all the way to the moon. Keep in mind that Saturn V's record for launching the greatest functional payload mass into low Earth orbit was over 141 metric tons. The three-stage Apollo 17 Saturn V threw over 141 metric tons into a 171.3 by 168.9 kilometer orbit at a 28.5 degree inclination. That's an incredible achievement with five engines. I have to admit, I'm sorry that Elon Musk ever mentioned that 250-ton payload on an expendable Starship figure. That really stuck in a lot of people's heads and really is not something that Starship should ever do. Starship is a reusable system. That's what makes it advantageous. It's going to be challenging to find 100 tons worth of payload in today's market, let alone 250 tons. If you use Starship in an expendable configuration, regardless of payload, all you have is a Super Saturn V, not a revolutionary new transportation system capable of transporting the human species across the solar system. That's the Starship that I was excited about when I started my channel three years ago. That's the Starship that's going to revolutionize spaceflight. The Starship that's capable of taking a hundred tons, maybe a little bit more up to orbit and then land and launch again in a couple of days, maybe a week, even two weeks, it would still be incredibly revolutionary compared to everything that came before it. If it can lift just that much to orbit and then do it again a couple weeks later, that will change everything. And it won't matter if Starship is carrying 100 tons, 150, 200, that is irrelevant. The reusability is what matters. The reliability is what matters. So what exactly am I advocating here? Well, now that we have lots of Raptor 2 engines, SpaceX has already built a great number of these things, and now that we have quite a number of Starship prototypes in the stable, let's go ahead and launch a few of these things and get good at reusing them. Get good at landing them, because you're going to have to do all of these things if you're going to achieve complete and rapid reusability. Starship is going to be grounded for a while, whether we like it or not, but during this time, suborbital flights are probably still manageable. That's something that the FAA would probably permit, given the experience that the FAA has with previous Starship tests. You can launch a suborbital flight of Starship without any significant danger to the surrounding environment, and then land it and launch it again. And the reason I'm advocating this, even though it seems like a step backward, is because SpaceX has yet to do this. They have yet to reuse a single Starship prototype. And they're going to have to get to that point before Starship becomes a viable system. So before we start worrying too much about theoretical payload, theoretical thrust, and how badass this rocket is going to be in the future, let's get it operational and let's get it functional so that when Starship launches again to orbit, hopefully in the next six months or so, it has a decent chance of landing and launching again with the same vehicle. When SpaceX accomplishes this, anything is possible. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please hit those notification bells as well, and also please check the GoFundMe page if you'd like to support my move across the Atlantic coming up now in less than three and a half months. And as always, stay angry about space.